Alrighty folks, we're back in the workshop again here with our Tesla front drive unit. Um, as you will see this time we have her basically buttoned up. The inverter is back on. Everything's back to uh, being the way it was. Um, and we're just doing some runs here. I've put some oil into the, uh, into the gearbox uh, so we can run up to some uh, higher RPMs without wrecking things so at the minute uh, we're just on our low voltage power supply again here uh, we're punched up I can grab the throttle pedal and we can pretty much wind her up So I think our uh, wheels will definitely be spinning <laughs> if we were in a if we were in a car. This one's going a lot faster than this one. Just coast down to a stop there because as you probably know by now with just the power supply we've got regen turned off um, so this is basically us uh, this is ready to go now into a vehicle uh, where it will get some road testing uh, tuning and various other fault finding that we will need to do with it Alrighty, so we're now rigged up to our high voltage test battery here. We've got uh, about 326 volts on the bus at the minute. Got our high voltage parameters loaded. Uh, clamp meter on the DC. Let me just grab the throttle and we'll do a few runs here at high voltage. Looks like our uh, drive shafts don't quite like being uh, spun up to high revs without loading on them. There we go. Running on high voltage, folks. Let's uh, see here, see if we can do a few little plots, trying to do this one handed is never a good idea, there we go, we need two currents, left side of the graph, and start plot. So right now we're plotting our raw motor currents, or phase AC phase currents I should say, sorry. So I'll give her some gas. Mm. 
region down there we get a nice pulse. We'll go back on the throttle. have it folks pretty much tested out our front drive unit here on both low and high voltages and uh, working away quite well okay so just before we wrap things up today folks um, one of the most common questions that I'm being asked uh, is what does it, does it actually need what signals do I actually need to run the motor so just before I uh, finish up here, I'm going to take you guys briefly through this, uh, and it's very, very simple. So, once you've your um, high voltage uh, connected up, uh, you can choose to do your own pre-charge, or you have outputs from the inverter that will control a pre-charge relay and a main contactor. Uh, we're not doing that here just for this particular testing rig. So the basic things that you need to run uh, one of these Tesla motors with these open source logic boards is you need a 12 volt power supply. So in this case, I'm just using a bench power supply, but this can be a 12 volt battery. You need a throttle pedal which has a output signal of somewhere between zero and five volts. I use these uh, BMW E46 pedals. Uh, they're very cheap and they kind of suit the vehicles that I'm working with. And you need to hook up that uh, signal. So there's a five volts ground and throttle signal goes into the wiring harness. So you need three wires to your throttle pedal. Um, you need 12 volts and ground and you then have two wires one of them is the forward direction one is the reverse direction and depending on which of those two wires that you pull up to your 12 volt supply the motor will run uh, forwards or reverse um, you need one other signal which is the start signal which is just a wire here that when you've got everything set up you just basically tap that off uh, 12 volts so you just give it a 12 volt pulse and that basically tells the inverter uh, that you wish to start to start up and go into closed loop control and it will then basically respond to the uh, throttle commands so that is the very very basic uh, setup uh, that you need to run one of these motors um, so there's no need for the computer. I just have it here just for monitoring and that. So there's no need for the computer. There's no need for any CAN bus. There's no need for any weird signals, um, validations, anything of the sort. It's just really is as simple as that. Um, and they do have the ability, obviously, to connect through RS-232 to a computer and also to... Uh, connect over CAN bus and you can program uh, the format of the CAN messages and what you want the CAN messages to send uh, through the computer interface and that is something that we'll be uh, going through at a later stage but that's it anyway uh, just a basic run around of what uh, it takes to run one of these drive units with the open source logic board Alrighty folks, so that's about what we got for you today um, on our front drive unit. Uh, this is going to be the last in the present series uh, on the front drive unit that you will see here in the workshop. It is going to be leaving here very soon, uh, destined for a vehicle. 
I'm not going to reveal anything about that uh, particular build. It's not me that's going to be doing it, it's another gentleman. Uh, but we will be involved with it, uh, getting data from it, testing it, uh, various other uh, parameters and kind of finding out if it, if it really actually works in a car or whether this is all just a waste of time. Anyway, I uh, hope you've enjoyed and we will be back uh, with more Tesla related content soon. Uh, don't forget to, I believe the phrase is like, subscribe and share. Uh, check the links in the description to my GitHub page where you can download all the design files for these logic boards uh, should you wish to make an attempt yourself. Also see links in the description to my Patreon and PayPal email addresses uh, so that you could financially contribute to this particular madness. So anyway, uh, we will see you guys in the next installment. Don't do anything crazy and uh, happy front drive unit high voltage motoring. <laughs>